Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet and today I'm in Windsor, Canada and here is the birthplace of the famous Canadian Club Whiskey and in this brand center you learn a lot about the Canadian Club brand and its history. The first thing you will notice is the big column still. This represents the production process of the Canadian Club. The specialty about the Canadian Club whiskey is that the Canadian Club uh, has all the grains mashed and fermented in a single process and then they are blended into the casks. Hiram Walker was an American businessman who emigrated to Canada in 1856 and opened the distillery in Windsor, Canada in 1858 and this is the Can uh, Hiram Walker distillery that still produces the Canadian Club. Unfortunately the distillery was sold separately and now the distillery belongs to the Pont Pernod Ricard uh, company and the brand belongs to Beam Suntory so we can't visit the distillery. The view of the front porch is very beautiful and you can see the skyline of Boston. And this is the actual place where the battle took place between the policemen and the mob when the whiskey was sold to the mob and they tried to smuggle it over to Boston and sell it in America as an illegal whiskey from Canada. This building is not actually from 1858 but from 1894 and it was built as a main office for the sale, the distribution and the production of the Canadian Club brand and the whiskey. During the tours through the building you learn a lot about the different offices and the people who worked in these offices. These range from the uh, office of Hiram Walker who was the founder and then you also see uh, the offices of his, his, his sons who then uh, continued the production and the sale of the Canadian Club brand throughout the 19th century. When you walk around the building, you see a lot of old pictures with production uh, facilities and people who worked for Canadian Club and also a lot of old bottles that show the heritage of what is Canadian Club whiskey. A bit controversial is that many of uh, the things seen here from the very beginning are older than Canada itself. The Hiram Walker Distillery was founded in 1858, but Canada was founded in 1867 from the three colonies. So, Canadian Club is more Canadian than Canada itself. In this room we see a lot of art that has been collected throughout the years and some of them have even been bought to represent a bit more of the Canadian side and the Canadian art that is around here in Windsor. This alone is a, a beautiful enough to say, yeah, let's take a, tip, take a trip to the Canadian Brand Center. And here we have a board uh, that displays nice Canadian club bottles from the 1920s. No, this is actually wrong. These are fakes. During the 1920s, there were a lot of fakes from Canadian club because of smugglers. And it was enough to fill a whole shelf of whiskey. Of course, the archive displays all of the Canadian Club bottles that have been bottled throughout the years. And here is a shelf with the very, very oldest. And also you see here that you have a lot of texts, old advertisements and labels of the bottles. The top of the shelf is dedicated to the different bottles that are specially bottled for all the different countries the whiskey is sold in. Here comes USA and all these bottles um, uh, resemble all the different um, uniqueness of the different states the whiskey is sold in and all the countries are honored with a special bottling. The whole building has been renovated and refurbished but everything has been built just as it was in the 19th century. When you walk through the building, you don't only learn about the history and the marketing of the brand, but also the production of the Canadian Club whiskey. In the end of the tour, 
the visitors will have a tasting and find out what is actually inside the current bottlings of the Canadian Club whiskey. After the tasting I would recommend you visit the shop and have a look if you take a souvenir with you. The Canadian Club brand center is so nice that many uh, couples decided to marry here. So I'm sitting here with Tish Harkers, um, 26 years in the company That's right. and you are a brand ambassador for Canadian Club. Yes. Um, that is a long time so mm -hmm. thank you for having us. and. What kind of whiskey are we are enjoying today? Well, you're in the house of Canadian clubs, so we're going to have all Canadian club whiskeys. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start with uh, our youngest variant, our, uh, we call this uh, Canadian Club Premium. Mm -hmm. Now, to be called a Canadian whiskey, you have to be aged for a minimum of three years. Okay? Okay. This is five years old, and this is our youngest. Uh, next, we're going to try our uh, Canadian Club Classic 12 years. So this is 12 long years in the barrel. Okay. okay. After that, we're going to try our Canadian Club Sherry Cask. Mm. And this one's really unique and interesting. Um, it starts aged eight years in oak and then transferred into a once-used sherry cask that we get from Spain. Ooh. And then lastly, uh, this is a new one for us. Uh, we launched this uh, October last year. Mm. It has won uh, International Canadian Whiskey of the Year. It won a big award and it also won a double gold at the San Francisco Whiskies of the World competition. So okay. this one has got... Um, there's two unique uh, production points with this one that sets it apart definitely from the rest of the portfolio. Okay. okay. So if we'd like to grab the top glass. Top glass. Okay. And this one here, again, is our Canadian Club Premium Whiskey. I always like to start with the tastings by asking you to give it the swirl. So swirl it around inside your glass. Okay. What you're going to look for is how full-bodied this whiskey is. Okay, so um, some of these whiskies that are younger and not as full-bodied, the, the tears will come down very fast and thin. This is not a full-bodied whiskey. So what you want is you want to see nice thick tears coming down slowly. And you see this is what happens with this whiskey. The tears come down very slow, they're thick. That means that this is a very full-bodied whiskey. All right. mm, okay, so it's the viscosity that... Exactly, exactly. Okay. So you see the tears are just starting to come down now, right? Oh, now they come down. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, we also, there's a process that we use um, when we are bottling, uh, before we put it into the bottle. It's called flocking. And flocking. Flocking. It's a filtering process. And what we're trying to do, do you see how there's a nice sparkle to this whiskey? There's about a hundred filters, little thin filters, and we push the whiskey through there. Mm -hmm. And because we don't want to, you know, when you think about whiskey, it's made up of grain, but mm -hmm. we don't want any grain particles in there. Okay. So some whiskeys you see, they're a little bit cloudy. Mm -hmm. They have not done this process. So we, again, going back 157 years, our founding father discovered that when you flock the whiskey, that you're filtering it without taking any of the taste out of it, but you're making it, it's a nice, it's very appealing to people mm -hmm. uh, for Canadian Club whiskey to look like this because in the glass it sparkles. Okay. okay. Um, when we're going to nose this, try and judge a half an inch from the rim, okay? Mm -hmm. And make sure you part your lips. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a fruity flavor. Fruit, that's exactly what Canadian Club's known for. Uh, it's fruity, there's some caramels and toffees in there. Okay. And uh, I do have room temperature bottled water there for you, but um, I like to, to, to prefer to get the full attributes um, mm -hmm. to, to try it straight. Um, how many ABVs are we looking at? Looking at 40 ABV. Here. 40 ABV, yes. okay. Yeah. Okay, it goes into our barrel at 144 or 72 ABV. Mm -hmm. uh, and it comes, it'll only reduce strength maybe the first one or two years, it'll come down to 70. Mm -hmm. And then of course after five years, we bring it back and bring it down to 40. Okay. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Mm. This brand here, uh, last year we picked up another gold medal. Mm -hmm. uh, this, from the very first day it was created, 157 years ago, was made to offer a zest. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. an experience. So pump, some people that are not familiar with whiskey tastings will say, oh, it burns. We never say that word, burn, because that's a negative description. I, I wouldn't say it burns. I, I would say you have a, what I find here interesting is that you have a long lasting fruitiness. I, I don't quite find that that much vanilla, but a lot of fruitiness. And, and of for fruit. me, it's, yes. it lasts longer than I had yes. in other whiskeys before. Yeah. So uh, great stuff, great stuff. Yes, thank you. Um, so, so what is it made of? Like what type of grain? Oh, the grains we use are, of course, corn. Uh, mm-hmm. Corn is the least expensive of all the grains, but it produces the highest yield. Okay. Um, and then we call that the base whiskey. And then we have flavoring grains. That would be rye, rye malt, and barley malt. Okay. okay, so do you distill them separately? Yes. And then blend them? Blend them before aging. Okay, before aging. Before aging. That's a unique characteristic just for Canadian Club Whiskey. Mm-hmm. Where they we're the only Canadian that can do that. Okay. Oh, interesting. So that's a different yeah. type of production. It is. And it, it really adds to the, um, to the palate, to mm-hmm. the finish and the palate of this whiskey. Um, okay. The other ones, the other Canadians are not allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, right. great. So that's our CC Premium. Um, mm-hmm. If uh, any people, uh, anyone asks me, how do you, you know, how would you consume this? I would say neat or on mm-hmm. the rocks or with a little splash of ginger ale. Uh, good mm-hmm. quality ginger ale. Uh, never Coke, because whatever <laughs> you mix with Coke tastes like Coke. <laughs> you can mix dirt with Coke, it's going to taste like Coke. <laughs> so we always suggest a little splash of ginger ale. But uh, this, is, this is very versatile. Uh, in the summertime here, it gets very warm, very humid and warm here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, will, um, we will mix it with cranberry juice, with oh. iced tea. Okay. So it's, uh, it's an international brand. It's available in over 165 countries around the world. It's everywhere. Okay. So it's a nice, nice brand. Okay, so I, I did a little bit of reading before yes. I came here. Yes. And I found out you got a lot of royal barons mm-hmm. from a lot of kings and queens of England. Yes. And you know the, the Scottish distillery Royal Loch Yes. Did you ever consider calling yourself Royal Canadian Club? That's a great question. Uh, we, do, we do have a lot of royal warrants. The first royal warrant came to us in 1898 from mm-hmm. Queen Victoria. And uh, she drank a lot of CC, a lot of Canadian Club. We never considered our founding father, Hiram Walker, um, when this name was created back in the 18, 1882, he never wanted to change it. Mm-hmm. Now, to let the world know that we had a royal warrant, he put the crest on every label. Ah, okay. So by putting the crest on and not changing the name, you still knew that we were we had a royal warrant from the Queen. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so that was our founding father's way without putting the name royal in there. So you would have not been allowed to put the crest on without the royal warrant. That's right. That's okay. right. Yeah, so we didn't have it the kind of is on there. It kind of is, <laughs> exactly. The crest is not, the word is not. But yes, it's on there. You're absolutely right. Okay. Yeah. Great, great. Okay. All right, our next whiskey, uh, this one here is our Canadian Club Classic 12 year. This one was launched uh, back in 1984. Mm-hmm. And the reason why our master blender wanted to launch this is because um, vodkas were becoming very popular, single malt scotches were becoming very popular over here in North America. So he wanted to create something that was going to be super, super premium. So, again, to be called a Canadian whiskey, you have to be aged for three years. This is 12 years, four times the legal limit, all right? Um, Now, in this whiskey, we have less corn, Mm -hmm. a little bit of rye, rye malt, a lot of barley malt, okay? Barley malt is this very decadent grain that is almost uh, toasty. It's very, it's softer Mm -hmm. than a rye. And uh, so this is a very, very beautiful whiskey. This is a sipping whiskey. We do not suggest you do anything with this except mm-hmm. sip it neat or sip it on the rocks. So the so nose on. A lot of malt in there. Okay, so. A lot of barley. Barley malt. A lot of barley malt. Yeah. So again, you know, it's, it's deep in color and uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit softer on the nose. There's more caramel uh, butterscotches in there. Mm-hmm. And that's yep. simply because it's been in the barrel for 12 long years. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's <coughs> more more buttery, mm -hmm. and yeah, but still a bit fruitiness in there. A little bit. Not as not as not as bitter, much, but mm -hmm. <coughs> but you can smell the oak as well. Mm -hmm. And again, all of these whiskeys very soft, soft oak. And why is that? Because all of our barrels are once used by our sister company in Kentucky. Ah, okay, so, so you always use used barrels. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that long maturation? Yes, yes. So um, our bourbon sister companies in Kentucky will use them once and mm -hmm. then they ship them to us. Mm -hmm. We give an aggressive char, a number four char. So we're burning off all the bourbon and we're exposing all the fresh wood and, and all the, the sugars that are in that wood and the tannins and the vanillas and everything. So, uh, but that's why you have very slight hint of oak on all these whiskeys, because the barrel has been used once. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Even smoother. Yes. Also, uh, I guess also 40%. Yes, 40%. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very smooth, very, very um, full body, nice. You, everything is happening at the same time on your palate, mm -hmm. and you're left with a nice long finish. Mm hmm. But yeah, oh, it's a, I would say it's a combination of um, oak and fruitiness. Yes, yes. But mm, I'm not sure what, what's dominating. Now, do you feel the softness on the top of your palate? Yeah, it's that's that's where this one lands more on the top of your palate. It's not like it's not like dryness. It's like no. like a little, just a very very soft coating or yes. something. Yes, yes. Oh, hard to explain. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. That's it goes back to being the full bodiedness of it. See, you don't have the aggressiveness of the corn because there's a small amount of corn in this one. Mm -hmm. And you have all of that beautiful barley malt in there. So that's, you know, another reason why mm -hmm. you don't have, um, I called it the zest with the first whiskey. Mm -hmm. You have little zest with this one, but you have a really nice, soft, and still, as I'm experiencing it, as I'm talking to you now, I still experience it, but it's, it, I describe it as being toasted. It's a toasted palate that you're left with on this one. Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent. Okay. So, sherry cast. Sherry cast. So, you said you use used cast. Do you always use used cast? Yes, yes. Well, yes, up until last year. So okay. <laughs> when we get to the next one, I'll describe. So, the first three, mm -hmm. the next one we're going to try, always once used bourbon barrels. Right? Bourbon barrels, okay. This one, I love this one. This one is my favorite, and I worked closely with the master blender on this one. Uh, Canadian Club Sherry Cask. We launched it in 1992, mm -hmm. and we were watching what was going on in the spirits industry around the world. And a lot of single malt scotches will finish in a quarter cask or a sherry cask. Mm -hmm. So we called our sister company Harvey's Bristol Cream in Spain, mm -hmm. and we said we're experimenting over here and uh, to ship us 100 once used sherry barrels. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this, the start of this, the base of this whiskey starts with this one here. Okay, CC premium, but instead of taking it out of the oak barrel at five years, we leave it in oak for eight years. Mm -hmm. And then after eight years in oak, we take it out of oak, transfer it to a once used sherry cask. But we don't char the sherry casks. Ooh, so okay. it stays in there. The whiskey will stay in there for one year. Mm -hmm. And what happens is every day that whiskey will go into the wood and it comes back out and it brings all the, you know, the Mediterranean fruit flavoring, the figs and... Uh, that's because of the sherry and mm -hmm. so you're left with um, a nine-year-old whiskey So it's eight years finished for one year in sherry. So it's a nine-year-old whiskey We bumped it up a little bit in proof. We wanted to make this again a super premium. It's 41.3 percent okay. Mm, okay, and again, it's done in batches uh, both this the last one that we tried classic 12 done in batches So we don't produce as much of these whiskeys as we do this one here mm, okay. okay, but what is you really unique with this one? Every batch is different, not because of the base of the whiskey, mm -hmm. it because of the sherry barrels that we get from Spain. Every one of them, some have a little bit more sherry, some have a little less. So this is batch 42 that we're going to try. 
Okay. And uh, this is a really nice one. Now, for my palette, I like number two and number 18. Maybe you would like 25 and 26. <laughs> okay. This is 42. So um, I also, this is becoming one of my favorites as well. So Sherry Cask, you see the color, definitely has a little bit of redness to it. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely. the Sherry. Okay. The nose. Yeah. The gra grapes in there. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, also. Some, it's got uh, like raisins, like saltines. Yeah. Dried fruit, some. Yes. Yeah. I think I need to buy some raisins sometime <laughs> to get, get the right, <laughs> right nose because I can't say which dried fruit that I smell here, but it's definitely something dried. Yes. I get figs mm -hmm. right away. Figs. Yep. Yeah. And the, and the caramels come through a little bit, but the, it's the strong presence of these fruits mm -hmm. that come through first. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. I like the, the mellow style of, of the Canadian club. Yes. Works quite well with the, with the fruits. Yes. So. Yes, yeah. Mm. This is uh, this is an incredible whiskey. Um, we introduced it into South Korea back in 2007, mm -hmm. and uh, they liked it so much so that they took all the inventory we had in North America. <laughs> so we had a little problem with this. Mm -hmm. uh, North America for about six months we didn't have any inventory, but they created a new style of of how to to drink this, mm -hmm. and it's called two two two. Mm -hmm. Two ounces of whiskey, okay? Okay. Two clean rocks. You know those those new ice cubes that are one inch square? Okay. Okay. As long as the ice is less than 24 hours old. And then a, let it sit for two minutes. Two, two, two. Okay. Perfection. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's the, that's the only way that I enjoy sherry cask. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to drink it just neat. I, I really like it. So, yes. um, is, there's no law in in Canada to do anything like like with the bourbon like you have to have fresh oaks or something or um, you can uh, you can add up to nine percent um, of another spirit mm, okay as long as it's aged for two years it has okay. to be aged for a minimum of two years okay so every Canadian whiskey is at least two, two years old oh, three years three years three years uh, and but you can you add, add mm -hmm. any another type of spirit as long as it's aged for two years. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So um, we're not really adding sherry to this. Mm -hmm. It's it's pulling the sherry out of the wood. So because it's happening inside the barrel, legally we're okay. Mm -hmm. So you can't touch the product when it's in the barrel. Um, yeah. So you know, because it wouldn't be called Canadian whiskey at that time. At yeah. That point. Okay. okay. Excellent. Excellent. And the last one is 100% uh, rye. 100% rye, yes. Brand new. Uh, we launched it last fall, October 2014. Mm -hmm. This whiskey is something that, um, again, we always pay attention to what's going on around the world when it comes to spirits, especially whiskey. Mm -hmm. And so what was happening uh, three years ago, um, rye became, started to become very popular again. And you know this industry goes like this. It's either you know it's either vodka is really popular or in Canadians down here. Now the Canadian whiskey is very popular. Vodka sales are slipping. So right now it's our time. So we launched this 100% rye. It's only rye. There's no corn. There's no barley. There's nothing else in here. This is Canadian 100% rye. Okay. okay. Uh, incredible whiskey. Now the two differences because um, you did ask me about do we always age in used barrels. Mm -hmm. Here's the difference. This one goes into brand new wood. Oh, okay. So okay. this is a new one. That's right. Okay. The um, second uh, the second difference that sets this apart, that there's uh, a high, high portion of the rye is only done in a copper pot. So mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't go through a still. It's just a copper pot. So the difference between the still, the still will strip it down, strip mm -hmm. it, make, will make it too clean. We didn't want that. We want this very flavorful whiskey, so we didn't put it into a column still at all. It's only done in the pot, pot still. Do you have one pot still or do you do double distillation with we the pot still? We have the world's largest pot still at our plant out in Calgary, Alberta. Okay. So they make this whiskey for us. 
they ship it back here to Walkerville, Ontario, and we mm -hmm. bottle it here on site. And where do you mature it? Um, we mature it here as well. You mature it here? Yeah. Okay. And it, the difference, another difference with this, when people will say, oh, what's the age? And we don't really talk about the age because it's age to taste. Mm -hmm. So I know that it's about four and a half years old. Um, mm -hmm. So you, know, you have to be aged for three years. This is about four and a half to five years. Okay. okay. But more, what more importantly about the age is that is the uh, is the proportion of pot distilled rye, 100% rye, and the new wood. Mm -hmm. So the nose on this, right off, right at the start. There's a lot of wood. There's a lot of oak in there. The sweetness is because of the rye. Also get a bit of spices, but Spice. it's, it's, yes. it's more like a spicy bread. And, and um, when I did the tasting notes for this one, I always try and stay away from um, spice, the word spice, because people will relate that to food. They don't really relate it to whiskey. Mm -hmm. So I talk about the robustness and I talk about the, f the flavor of rye. Rye is a small little grain that has mm -hmm. a very thick skin. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to manufacture. Uh, so when you break it down, but it's very, very bold in taste. It's a bold mm -hmm. tasting. Yeah, that's what I mean with, with spiciness. You know, when you yes. have a rye bread. Yes. And that is, yeah. Yes, it's definitely. It's a very corny and, yes. and, and intense flavor, but mm -hmm. it's not like chili or like no. pepper. It's no, not spicy like that. That's right. That's right. So, cheers. So, cheers. So you get a lot of zestiness on your tongue. That's that robust rye. Mm -hmm. And but very soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, softness, but a little glowing inside yes. the mouth. But yes. in the back, you have that softness. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm amazed how how you uh, the, the mouth feel with Canadian Club is very different. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I find the taste is Taste profile is more mellow, easy drinking. Yes. Um, but the, the mouth feel is, is very soft. It's not that attacking on, on parts of your your, That's right. your mouth. So That's right. I, yeah. I like that quite a lot. Yeah, so. that's part of that uh, that high portion of pre barrel blending. Mm -hmm. And you know, think about think about a if you're making well you mentioned chili, you know chili. You 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 mm -hmm. make you get the pot and you start you brown the meat and then you start putting the ingredients in and over three or four hours these, all the flavors and all those ingredients will marry together. It's mm -hmm. the same idea with this, these whiskeys. So you have the corn, the rye, the rye malt, the barley malt. Yeah, over the course of five years, 12 years, so the different years, they marry. So every second of every day, for five years or 12 years, those, 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 those flavors are marrying together. Mm -hmm. And so it's so much more of a smooth palate. So this marrying of the, the different distilled uh, grain spirits, mm -hmm. is that a heritage that you got from, from when the brand started? Yes, 157 years ago. Yes, Hiram Walker created that. He wanted to create a new style. So um, what was happening in the United States, see he came here and nobody was here. This was all farmland. So, <laughs> um, But in the United States, rum was very big. Uh, bourbon was starting to become popular. Uh, but here in Canada, he wanted to make a new style mm -hmm. because not everybody has, you know, those are, you know, bourbons and, and scotches are big. You have to have a big palate mm -hmm. and not everybody has a big palate. So he created a, 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 a different style that anybody can enjoy. Oh, okay. Great. So, yeah, I, I like the, the brand scent that you showed me thank and you. I showed on the tape. So thank you for having us. You're welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. And if you're ever in, in Canada or around this region, then I highly advise you to come here. It is a great place with a lot of history and there, there are arts in here. So come on by and have a drink of yes. Canadian Club. And <laughs> yeah, thank you thank for having you. us. Thank you very much. And if you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up. Um, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>